Jazz team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look live there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full roar as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up with the Minnesota Vikings. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Here's Kai Forbath now to get us started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. On the return, it's Kenyon Barner. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Eagles offense trotting out there. Nick Foles, the quarterback. Everyone knows the story. Carson Wentz hurt against Los Angeles back on December 10th. Now Foles 2-1 as a starter since. Now he takes him into the playoffs, hosting Atlanta. How do you think he does? Well, he had the four-touchdown game in his first start against the Giants this season and looked like, okay, it's going to be not seamless, but the Eagles felt pretty good about it. But, boy, what a tough time in the next two ball games. one of them against Oakland, one of them against Dallas. And I've heard this. His last 15 third downs that he's quarterbacked, they're 0 for 15 on third down. That's got to change if the Eagles expect to advance in the playoffs. He's got experience. He's been a starter in the league. He's been to the Pro Bowl. Jay Ajayi's going to go. Pass the 20, 10, and he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A huge play there right off the bat. 71 yards. Well, welcome to the party. First carry of the game. How about that? And just think, as far as he's concerned, he's just getting warmed up. And here we go on first and goal. Side of the five, right around the six yard line. Tom Johnson in there to drop him for a loss on the play. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, it took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. to opening drive they get into the end zone they do it on the ground and not only is the person lugging the ball happy of course because he got it into the end zone how about the offensive linemen and receivers who are blocking for him they have to feel great about themselves sticking in the end zone on a running play scoring summary three play drive and it ends in a touchdown run by LeGarrette Blunt.
Elliott now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Minnesota Vikings, here comes the offense. Now, they'll have to face a much improved New Orleans defense. Now, they saw New Orleans in week one, Charles, but this quarterback, Case Keenum, it wasn't him that started that game. That was Sam Bradford, remember? It was, and here's where it's interesting. Sam Bradford was a monster in that game against New Orleans. Threw for big yardage, pinpoint accuracy. Looked like this offense was really going to elevate under him, but he hurt his knee. Never the same after that. Case Keenum took over, and the offense morphed and changed to fit Case Keenum's style. A little more movement, bootlegs, quarterback. No quarterback run game, but just moving him out of the pocket to get him some sight lines. Be interesting to see what Case Keenum does against a much better New Orleans defense this time around as they try and win a playoff game at home. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and that'll bring up second down. Time to feature the offensive starters and to give some love to the tight end, Kyle Rudolph. He's been to the Pro Bowl already, battled a few injuries, but he's back and better than ever. Has added a little yoga to his regimen in order to make him more nimble. That makes it that much harder for the defenders to catch him. Second down following the incompletion. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. The defensive unit for Philly here, a group that gave up only 79.2 rushing yards per game, best in the league. And so many people look at how they play defense, their style, that wide nine that they call it, meaning the defensive ends are out wider than normal. Looks like there's a lot of space to run the ball, doesn't there? But they've got two tackles in Tim Jernigan and Fletcher Cox that eat up a lot of space, and they bring the linebackers a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage, so it's a lot harder to run the ball. In fact, they were number one in the league against the run in 2017, and they will get tested by the Atlanta Falcons, Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. They, this defense is going to have to carry them. Without their quarterback, Carson Wentz, they will have to play at their best. As you and I know from visiting a lot of camps, no one practices this type of a start, do they? Uh, especially not on the road. You give up the touchdown on the opening drive. Now there's likely a three and out on your first possession. Yeah, you throw that incompletion there. You hate to fall into a hole early, especially on the road. Got to be careful. And Quigley now on to punt as he sends this one away. This is taken at the 15. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And certainly they'll be hoping to hit pay dirt like they did on the last drive. Got the football back, so a chance to go up two scores. And they haven't been tentative at all in this ball game because sometimes you start a game with your script to try and get information out of the opposing defense. How will they play you in certain situations? Sometimes you script to attack, and that's what I'm seeing so far. a play fake as they set up to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. And the tight end, Zach Ertz, is key in this offense as we get a look at the starters. Comes out of the factory known as Stanford, which keeps putting out tight ends. Zach Ertz, one of the better ones we've seen in recent years. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now it's a Jai. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. For Ajayi, he's had seven games so far this year with the Eagles. How key is he going to be with Nick Foles, the quarterback, instead of Carson Wentz in this playoff push? He'll be a monster key in this one, and he'll be part of what I think is going to be a three-headed monster that they'll use in the, run, in the backfield in the playoffs. Jay Ajayi, he's going to be the sprinter-type guy, can create the big plays. But Garrett Blunt, he's that guy that just moves the ball between the guards and the tackles. And Corey Clement, 
He's kind of a do-it-all type of opponent. Undrafted free agent out of Wisconsin. But Ajayi, if he can get a few big sprints in and open things up for his offense, yeah, he could be the guy that could carry them deep in the playoffs. And it is still early, just the first quarter. But you start prorating the numbers, and we might be in for some history. I mean, that last run puts him over 100 yards already, and we've still got three quarters to go. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They run with a giant. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. He's had a big game tonight, and while no one's going to be overly concerned about that last play, you also know that the offense coordinator does not want to see that happen again. They want to get back to doing what they've been doing all game long. strike they'll look to throw his throw incomplete Torrey Smith the intended receiver and it's third down it's time to show you the number one overall defense in the National Football League it's on the side of the Vikings they're number two against the run and number two against the pass but number one overall hard to move the football against them no matter what you're trying to do because they have the bulk up front against the run they have the speed in the secondary and linebacker position and how about Xavier Rhodes at corner Harrison Smith at safety, both named to the All-Pro team, although Harrison Smith not named to the Pro Bowl team. A lot of people thought that was a major snub. Yeah, one of those oddities, and I talked with Harrison Smith about that, and you know what he told me? What? I don't even put it in my contract as a bonus because I don't trust the process of the Pro Bowl hmm. selection. But I didn't ask him if he'd put it in there for the All-Pro team because if so, <laughs> he'll cash in pretty well. Ching. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong, didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. So on fourth down, here's the veteran left-footed punter Donnie Jones to kick it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he makes it all the way down to the 31. A big run that time by Murray. 46 yards. Nothing fancy there. A little smash mouth football right up the gut on the dive and it turns into a huge play. You talk about the fastest way to the secondary. Right up the gut as you described and sprinted into the secondary for a long, long run. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They go with Murray again, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack, and on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Now a second down run for Murray. Down to about the 22 here. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. 
Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and are controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's given us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Now the Georgia Southern man, this is Jarek McKinnon. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. And Forbath will put this one through, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So no problems there with that one as they're able to put three up on the board. Yeah, it's pretty much a windless night. There's only a very light breeze, so it's a perfect night for kickers. And like you say, no problems with that one. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This is taken at his four. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. And with the day he's having as we look at some of these highlights, maybe he wants to duplicate this pregame meal next week. Whatever it is, guaranteed he will ask for the exact same thing each and every week as long as he continues to run like that. Sometimes it's that simple, partner. Yeah. Just, you, know. And you know how superstitious these guys oh, can be. Oh, there's no doubt, right? If you put your left sock on first and you have this kind of game, you'll keep doing it. In this case, Let's investigate that pregame meal. We might need some of that. <laughs> yeah, right. It's working. Here's a handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. They run again with a Jai. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game. And while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. Foles. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Here's Donnie Jones now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. 
I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Keenum on first down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Second down now after the incompletion. Now a give. This is Murray. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. is Keenum on third down. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Here's Ryan Quigley now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Fielded at the 20. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. two, maybe three, up near the 37. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Second down following the run. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Third and four. Here's Foles. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And that little deke, the juke move that we saw, able to give him the first down yardage before he's brought down. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. They'll throw. And complete to Zach Ertz. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. He got 29 yards that time. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover.
Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here's Ajayi. Room here to run. And able to work his way down to the 16. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. In the red zone this time. has it left side and they'll bring him down at the 13 yard line only three there on the pickup but that's enough to move the chains this drive it's been a good mix three passing plays three runs hitting on all three of those passes and the last one putting him in the red zone so wouldn't you think play action right here because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it go play action and take your shot at the end zone can run another play the clock hits triple zeros and time is up on the first quarter 7-3 the score and we're back to Philadelphia after this the NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade the sports fuel company back live with Charles Davis I'm Brandon Gordon. it's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two and they're on the move here they've got it first and ten Touchdown. Elliott now to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's capped off by a touchdown run by Jay Ajayi. Elliott now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. You know, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. 
I if they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Again, it's Murray. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. From the gun on third down, Keenum. And this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. A chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. They'll start out on the ground with a Jay. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. on second down right side and he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line and a solid job using his legs 16 yards and a first down on the keeper well partner for a few years there we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole nfl it seemed like everyone was using it but it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons mainly because people were worried about their quarterbacks getting hit but when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. They'll look to throw here on first down. And this will be incomplete. So that pass hits the ground, and Charles gives me a chance to ask you about wild card weekend. Interesting developments. What was the biggest surprise to you? Was it the Titans' victory? I think you have to start there because they were 18 down in the third quarter, and that doesn't happen very often. I think you can go back to, what, four times since 1933 or somewhere in that neighborhood that a team in the playoffs would come from that type of a deficit to win the game, and I thought Marcus Mariota was absolutely nails down the stretch. The second surprise to me, of course, not that Jacksonville won mm -hmm. against Buffalo, but that Blake Bortles, their quarterback, offense. had more rushing yards than <laughs> passing yards in a playoff game, and they still managed to win it. And held Buffalo to three points. Defense down. dominant. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Drops it off to Ajayi. 
And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. He'll drop to throw. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Latavius Murray getting set to go again. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? First down, Murray. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Second down, here's Keenum. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. down throw. Keenum. Open here, Adam Thielen. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. He got 29 yards that time. That's not only Adam Thielen, that's the pro bowler, Adam Thielen, who had 91 catches this year and over 1,200 yards a career high. We always look for great stories when we do games. Is there a better one this season than Adam Thielen in terms of where he came from? to make a Pro Bowl roster as a receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. Lightly recruited out of high school, ends up at Mankato State, which is now known as Minnesota State Mankato. Undrafted, goes to a rookie free agent tryout camp, hangs around, makes the practice squad, first as a special teams guy, and now he's one of the better receivers in the league. I think it's one of the best stories I've heard in 2017 NFL. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Tenth carry of the game now, Murray. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. The Vikings on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and seven. 
Now it's Keenum. And that is incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Here's Ryan Quigley now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Here comes the pressure, and the Eagles get there to block it. A big seam, and he might go all the way. And he'll score. Touchdown, Eagles. Gardner, as you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a calm block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Elliott on for the extra point. And it's 21 to 3. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And now we move our focus to Stephon Diggs. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times, that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. but he takes it up to the 40. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they could do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? It's Murray. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. You and I both know that you don't really, truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray's a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him, upright with some power. to Murray on first down. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. 
when you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Second down. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. The Vikings on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This time they face a third and 2. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Year. I'm not sure we saw very many of those runs, did we, from the Vikings? I mean, they had the poorest rushing attack in the league. Just 75 yards per game, but carries like the one we just saw. That'll help bolster that average. Yeah, certainly, and they tried to beef up the offensive line in the offseason, brought in Latavius Murray, and then drafted Dalvin Cook out of Florida State. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Keenum. Yeah, he's got it. No gain there on the completion. It'll be second down. Pass complete. But no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. You get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no, no yardage. Okay. Now they'll run. Murray. And they will 
will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. No gain on the play there, and they're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. I don't have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. Now, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one, but I don't think they're built like that. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. This offense on third down today, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. They're looking at a third and goal right, here. Go. Green, 39. They'll run for it. This is Murray. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Latavius Murray taking it in. And the Vikings are able to cut into that deficit. Well, that touchdown certainly helps, but they've got to go ahead and convert, get to the half, and figure out how to keep chopping down this lead in the second, don't they? Yeah, they still need to regroup, and they still need to end the second quarter strong. A little bit of time left. Kai Forbath on for the extra point. It's up and good, and the lead is down now at 11. It's 21 to 10. A 10-play drive that time, and it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run. Forbath out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. It'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. And staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. Now Foles over the middle, and it's incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it and. He gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. The Eagles on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. Here it's third and three. Back to throw. The open man is Smith. 
And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. here on first down he's going to look deep down the field this is caught inside the 15 a big play there just before halftime 53 yards well it's easy to make a case that Alshon Jeffrey loves to run the post pattern and the guy throwing the ball to him loves him running it right in his sight lines great catch radius he can stick the ball up there and he can go out and get it So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Eagles are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The Vikings didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. Here we go. Let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. Eagles opening drive. Blunt's going to stay between the tackles, and he'll end up sprinting into the end zone. Eagles up by a touchdown. Now first and 10, they'll run it here with Jay Ajayi, and he caps off the six-play drive with the score. The lead now at 11. Third and goal. Murray's going to stay up the middle, and he capped off the long drive with a touchdown, closing that gap to just 11. So that'll do it for us. We'll go back now to Philadelphia for the second half. Okay, Larry, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. 
Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Second half starts with a run by Murray. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. But I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. They run again with Murray. He's seen a ton of action tonight. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. The Vikings on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This will be third and five. All right, here we go. Ah! Working from the gun, Keenum. That's caught by Treadwell. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Green, 39. Keenum on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Second down, it's Keenum. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. Third down here. The Vikings on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and ten. Shotgun snap for Keenum. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Ryan Quigley now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. It's Defense, yeah. we've, got the de we've, got the, we've got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. <laughs> Defense shut him down. Let's see if the offense gets done. And he's brought down after a good game. 
That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw down that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They go play action here on first down. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. So the pass falling to the ground there, but one pass that did not fall to the ground that was tipped. Maybe the most miraculous play we've seen all season. How about Marcus Mariota's self-catch? And he, he threw a touchdown pass to himself. Only that's what that happened one other time, 1997. Yeah, Brad Johnson did it when he was the quarterback of the Vikings against Carolina. But how about how the whole thing just unfolded? Marcus Mariota having to exit out of the pocket. Not unusual. That's part of his game. Makes a throw. is tipped in the air. He catches it. Makes a move and then dives and sticks the ball on the pylon for the <laughs> touchdown. They were down 21 to 3 at the time that play happened. That kick started their comeback and eventual win at Kansas City. Yeah, and CD, you remember it was third and goal, so if they don't get that, maybe that comeback doesn't happen. Back to throw here. He sets to fire deep. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. Call that a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. And our attention here turns to Latavius Murray. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. And he's right there on the doorstep now. They'll run the counter with Murray, and he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field. They're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. <laughs> Oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. This will be fielded at the 17. 
when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. A chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone. And now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage. And again, that second score here in the third quarter. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On play action, they'll throw. Smith catches left side. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Well, that certainly looked like the Torrey Smith we knew in Baltimore. A guy can just run past defenses, and what do they say? Take the top right off of them. Game-changing speed, and the days in Baltimore good, days in San Fran not so great, but now hoping to get back to his former self. I would say they have an extremely motivated wide receiver in Torrey Smith. So the offense has it first and ten. as they run the counter play. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And that'll make it third down. The Eagles on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be well short of a first down as he stopped again right at the line of scrimmage. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big time <laughs> play there. Here's Donnie Jones now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And now out comes Minnesota. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so someone well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. First and ten, Keenum over the middle here to Rudolph. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Murray. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. 
Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Third down, Murray. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here we go now. Ooh, ah! They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Most players that tell you that night games, while they can be fun, they're really hard to prepare for because you wake up on game day and all you want to do is get to the stadium and let's get going. But you got to bank that fire a little bit and hold it until the evening. It's almost like a Broadway premiere. Got to wait until the nighttime to go out there in front of the bright lights. And boy, has he harnessed himself really well. And now he's unleashing it on the opponents. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. That's going to go as a loss of a full eight yards. And it sets him back for second down. Well, that wasn't exactly a work of art, was it? No, that wasn't a thing of beauty. This is why I don't play in points per reception fantasy league. Is that, is that what they call receiver PPR? Receiver still gets a point there. Yeah. Oh, and you went that far back. No bueno. Well, I'll tell you what. I wish I had their defense on, uh, on my fantasy right, game. Green, 39. This is Murray. <laughs> And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. He's able to get four back on the run, but now they'll have to find something here on third and about 14. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Here we go now. Third and long. It's Keenum. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Mills. And a great return as he takes us up just shy of the 45. So it's third and long, and you know this is going to be a pass. So defensively, they're bringing an extra defensive back and just blanket the field. And this is an ill-advised throw right here as it winds up being picked off easily. gearing up again here to go on offense. He's been a good game manager. They're winning here in the third quarter, but really the ground game is where it's been at for them, hasn't it? So whatever the game plan was, you just got to focus on continuing to run the football. And really that takes the pressure off of the guy throwing it around. Doesn't have to be the focal point. Hand it off. Let him chew up the yardage in big plays. And your team's winning. The only people upset the fantasy guys who may have started him at quarterback <laughs> in their leagues. And we'll see if they continue with a recipe of the ground game. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this is Ertz with it, right side. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll run it now out of the gun. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. 
And the Eagles on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and seven. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And he connects with Ertz. And he is down deep into Minnesota territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. So on first down, they'll run it on the draw play. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Now that was impressive by the defense. They just got hit for a big pass play, and instead of rushing out and getting back deep to cover, they played their techniques, saw the run develop, and ran to it and made the play. going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. one but this time they get him behind the line it'll be a loss of one and that is going to set up third and goal Brandon this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter they're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball made it very difficult right there now they need to repeat that effort yeah bring seven eight nine whatever it's going to take to slow them down they've been stuffed twice here for losses now it's third and goal They'll set up to throw to the sideline. And wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Kick by Elliott is good. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give them some breathing room and lets them build up a little cushion. To the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. <laughs> and out now come the Vikings. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? 
I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Just don't want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Ten yards still left on second down. Shotgun snap for Keenum. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Keenum. Screen play, McKinnon. And he's brought down, but following a pretty juke move that gives him the first down. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Hang on now. Three, 19. Three, 19. Again, Keenum. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Fletcher Cox never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. To throw on second down is Keenum. He almost had it. The big D lineman nearly had an interception. Instead, it falls down incomplete. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. They'll run it now out of the gun. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. This is taken at about the 14. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now a 
handoff here to his running back. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for him. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken farm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. Now, they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side of the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. The Eagles on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and seven. Now Foles. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Here's Donnie Jones now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Here's Sherrills. He won't go down. <laughs> 12 yards on the return that time. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. and 10. Here's Keenum going with a screen for Murray. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. From the gun, it's Keenum. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. Green, Green, Green. From the gun, here's Keenum. Open man is Thielen. It's complete. 20, 10, touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen, 59 yards. And the Vikings have made this now a one-score game. And sometimes those slants, they can be so tough to defend after the catch. It, it, it just happens so quickly. And really, it, what gets set up there is how quickly everything happens. Ball's out of the hands of the passer in a hurry, and he just takes it and goes. And he went all the way into the end zone.
Now Forbath for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 24-17. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case, And he'll give it here to his running back. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is, don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Trailing in the fourth, this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. draw play and he'll get this across midfield to the 48 eight yards on the pickup and now they'll have some options on second and short oh that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players isn't it tough hard gritty run got behind his pads bowled over a few people look at that one right up the gut so up through three quarters no reason to lighten up now and after the play on the ground that brings up second down here Shy of the 40 at the 41. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves his sticks. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. Delay of game, offense. And that'll set them back five. Still first down.
First and 15 here behind the chains. And now here's a carry heading left. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be a second and long. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Now a carry for Blunt. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Here's Foles. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. And right now I take my rudimentary kindergarten skills and draw where the tackle box would be because that was close. I thought he was in the tackle box. He has to be very careful where he gets rid of the football from that spot. Yeah, they say there was a receiver in the area, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a receiver in the area. Here is the punter Jones as he gets this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Now Case Keenum and the offense heading back onto the field. And after the slow start, the numbers show he has really straightened things out. How often sometimes is that that you come into a game and the defense is game planned a little differently than you expected? More often than maybe people realize, so adjustments are often a big part of each and every game, and it's not just getting to halftime. It's series to series to make it work, and being able to hang in there when there's a little adversity early and see them able to flip it around, it's kind of gratifying for a team to watch, especially for a coach. Keenum fights off the defender. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Dunnell in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. time and it'll be a third and long situation coming up and that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him he's had a heck of a game and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball but i always think back to what all those old coaches say the ball's not that heavy keep carrying it kid possibly a turning point big play coming this is third and long Now McKinnon. He showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Give him eight yards on the carry, and that's going to bring up fourth down. But once again, a good example of situational football. That was third and very long, so you know they were guarding against the pass. And when they decided to run the ball, that was okay. Whatever yardage they picked up, as long as they didn't get to the first down marker, the defense was willing to concede, and they stopped them well short of a first down. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over.
One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Now Keenum got to have this one. And he's able to find Diggs. Stephon Diggs, the 20, 10, touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs, 88 yards. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. A drive there of just four plays. And it's polished off by a Viking score. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll come out throwing here on first down. They dump off underneath to Ajayi. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll make this a second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. They'll look to throw. Ertz over the middle. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. They'll look to throw. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Call it a three-yard gain, and it'll bring up a second down. The Eagles hustling to the line, clock rolling. Gosh, given the time in the short game, would he have been better off just dropping that? Yeah, when you look at the clock, you think so. But it's hard to get a receiver to drop a football. They're trained to catch everything. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. He'll drop to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play.
Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. They go with Murray again. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. And he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. To Jay. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And, oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, 
Everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Now back to throw. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And after the nice stiff arm, the next wave swarms in quickly for the stop. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And it'll be fourth down. The temptation to go for it probably there always is, especially in overtime. Got to punt it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially play a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. Here's Donnie Jones now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it, but they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done, now part two. gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. But that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Let's go! Blue Here's Moore. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. So they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He's got a first down and more past the 30. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. So it'll be first down here after the run. Hey, hey, right. Watch that in. All right, here we go. Three, They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game of the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. That was second down run for Murray. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that's going to make it third down and 10. He's had some big runs in this game. Not there, though. But I don't think they're going to be deterred by that play right there. He's had some nice runs in the game. And how many times have we seen a good running back get stopped, yet turn it into something big on a later carry? I'd stay with him. Keenan with his first throw in OT. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. 
And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. The screen does get him nine, but it also brings up a fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Here's Ryan Quigley now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. Now if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. to Ajayi to begin the drive. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They run again with Ajayi. He takes this for three to the 29. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, and defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Man, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They go play action here on first down. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. A good pick up there, 22. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They run with Ajayi. Jay Ajayi's gonna go. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Eagles are winners here as we say so long from Philadelphia.